So first of all, welcome to the Electric Garage. The Electric Garage is all about community empowerment. The reason this project started is we want to see Pittsburgh as a place where innovation happens in the transportation sector. It's a no-brainer. We have machine shops in Pittsburgh. We have excellent people who know what to do with their hands. And it's time for us to essentially think about empowering ourselves to make a difference to the future of urban public transportation. The beauty of it happening here is that we have high technology from Carnegie Mellon combined with our outstanding independent garages in town, like Bomb Boulevard Automotive and Mike's Auto Body, combined with outstanding industry in town. And I want to recognize some of those because they're here right now. So this is teamwork, and it's about all those people working together to make a new kind of option available for the Pittsburgh commuter. Software engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, firmware experts, and people who have done a massive amount of uh, actual physical labor to create a new kind of generation of cars. So I'm going to ask Bill Peduto to welcome you all here. Then I'm going to give you some technical details on the car, like how much it costs, how far it goes, how long it'll take to convert it. And then we're going to unveil the official waiting list that you can sign with a $50 refundable deposit to actually have a charge car made for you here in Pittsburgh. But first, I'm very, very pleased that we have already had Mike Doyle speak to us, and now we're pleased to also have Bill Peduto speak to us. Thanks, Bill. Celia. Thank you. In case Congressman Doyle didn't say it, I'm really charged to be here today. <laughs> Not he's he's a <laughs> uh, It's a combination between innovation, technology, doing the right thing for the environment and getting local people involved in order to create a manufacturing base, a production base, and an industry base right here in the city of Pittsburgh. What's needed is, is that little sprout, that, that little bit of a seedling that is starting right now needs to be nurtured so that it can expand. If you think about these cars like I think about them, I wonder why we can't have these for every building inspector. Why when we send out to get a new order on vehicles, why don't we send them up here and get 50 cars converted over? If the wheels are still good and the brakes are still good and the body's still good, it's a great opportunity. You know, 100 years ago, people like both of my grandfathers came here to use their backs and their shoulders and to build out an old industry. Today, the folks that are in this room are building Pittsburgh's future. You're using your minds and using creativity and giving us an opportunity to have a stake in the 21st century. And I just wanted to be here today to say thank you. It is a joy to drive. It's stick shift, which makes it fun. But you can't stall it. When you put it in first gear and stop at a red light, it doesn't stall because it's an electric motor. <laughs> so it's got all the benefits of a stick shift. You can, you can really shift gears, none of that paddle nonsense. And all the benefits of an automatic. You don't stall the car ever. Um, it accelerates extremely well all the way to highway speeds. And I've taken it 70 miles an hour up Green Tree Hill, as has been. And I know that's not legal, but it's good for you to know that. <laughs> so it can be done. It's possible. And so the car is plenty fast for the parkway and for the region around here. We've designed this car for commuters in Pittsburgh. We had a special survey done of Pittsburgh commuters on our website, chargecar.org. And what we learned is that over 85% of people in America commute less than 35 miles a day. What's more, more than 50% of Pittsburgh commuters commute less than 12 miles a day. So the aha was, let's make a car that has a small battery pack, so it's relatively inexpensive, and easy to charge with a regular plug. So you don't have to put a $2,500 charging system in your house. You can charge it anywhere. What's more, that means we can ask individuals and agencies like Giant Eagle, would you please put charging facilities in your parking lots? And they don't have to think of it in terms of $1,000 upon $1,000 for each charging facility. Instead, they're just regular 15 amp plugs. And so indeed, I mentioned Giant Eagle because we're talking to them about that. That's very exciting. And this car has enough batteries in the back to go 40 miles on a charge plus. So 40 miles is a nice, safe, conservative number. So what we want you to think about is the idea of having a commuter car. It's a niche vehicle for your commute that's a 40-mile car, but it can be used on the highways and can be recharged overnight. Uh, that's the fundamentals of the car. Of course, the interior is just like an original Honda Civic, so you still have five seats. You can still put a car seat in it and such. The conversion process is tricky because we're putting together a number of off-the-shelf parts with some custom electronics. And so when we look at price, the problem we have is we can't compete with General Motors or with Detroit or with Japan when they're making things in quantity 10,000 or 100,000 or a million. So it's going to sound expensive. And we've worked to make sure we put a cap on the price. So here's what we've done. We don't know the exact conversion cost because we can't until we start building them and because it depends on how many people sign up. The more that sign up, the cheaper we can make the whole process for everyone. But we can guarantee a cap by literally subsidizing it from Carnegie Mellon. And so I've decided with our team that we can do that. So we're subsidizing it to $20,000.
So basically, if you bring in a Honda Civic, we can get a local garage to convert it for $20,000 guaranteed. The hope is that we can significantly cut the cost down below that. And there's a few ways we can do that right away. There's a federal tax rebate on conversions. So that's $2,000 off. So the effective cost to an individual is $18,000 for the conversion right now. So the Honda Civic outside is four joyrides. So find one of us, Josh, or me, or Ben Brown. We'll give you a ride in the car, take you around the block, and you can see what the car is like. We'll take people four at a time. Second thing we're doing is we're in negotiating with Zipcar. Is the Zipcar representative here yet? So Zipcar wants to put two Zipcar spots right here. And the excitement around that is they're going to offer a discount for electric car owners. So you can bring your electric car here, park it, free parking for electric cars, take the Zipcar at a discounted rate, and go on a longer trip. And so that's a model for you to have one car that you own, an electric car, and have a zip car. We're also working with local foundations on a very exciting idea. The buses are being cut because of budget cuts. So we've looked at local communities where we can have Zipcar administer a local electric charge car in that community as a share of car. Administered by Zipcar, produced by local mechanics, and super cheap to operate, so it's far less expensive for the locals, and it enables them to take a car and get to a grocery store where they have healthy food options rather than just processed food at the local 7-Eleven. No offense to 7-Eleven intended. <laughs> well, okay, slight offense intended. <laughs> and it's interesting to think that we can make something in volume one right now for $20,000. It's astounding. Car companies design and price optimize to get something to cost $10,000 to build in quantity, 100,000. So there's room to lower the cost of this over the next three years to an astounding degree. When you think about the idea that right now we're buying off-the-shelf commercial parts in quantity one, and yet we're not in the $100,000 realm of an electric Tesla. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. And we're incredibly grateful for your support. This is the way we think we can really put a positive change into Pittsburgh's air. Mike? Is somebody sponsoring legislation to do that tax credit for you? No. OK, so when I get back Tuesday, I'll work on that first. Yay! <laughs> sits in the uh, spare tire well of the Honda. We've got it covered up with a nice carpet so you can uh, use it like a regular trunk. You can see there's lots of trunk space left. Uh, there's the batteries. You can see the blinking lights. That's the battery management system doing its job. What it does is keeps all the batteries equalized. Um, we also, you'll notice we have uh, insulation around the sides. This is for, for primarily for battery heating. We have heaters underneath the battery for cold weather. Our connection is just an uh, ordinary 120 volt AC outlet to recharge on their 50 amp charger. This is an electric vehicle charging station made by OpConnect. And it can charge level one, level two, uh, automobiles and, and it, it can also charge four cars at a time.